Welcome to another edition of Crossing the Middle Ministry. Uh, I'm kind of dressed up a little bit today, looking snazzy. It's an old trick I learned in the Marine Corps how to dress. Make your get your little tie pin and place a little cross. See that net pretty. Um, presenting to you quite a different spirit today, and uh, that's what I want to talk to you about: the spiritual gifts. And of course, this is coming from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Who are, the, who are these spiritual gifts for? Um, and how are we to use these gifts? Man, I'm telling you, we could, I could write a book on this. Uh, a lot of people has, as a matter of fact. And uh, Apostle Paul, he thought it was pretty important uh, as far as writing it down, too. Spiritual gifts should go hand in hand with... Uh, uh, love. If you notice, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 13 is the great love chapter. Um, so they need to go together hand in hand. These things are to be operated in love between the Christian, the body of Christ, and the things of, of God concerning those things. Now, now listen, these are not just for church. These are for the church, but they're not just for church on the weekend. These things are for every part of your life. They're meant for us to function in the, in the body of Christ. It means when you go visit people, they work just as good there as they do anyplace else. Listen, I've had better church when I've been alone with me and one or two other people visiting someplace else out of church than I, uh, than I have most of the time in church. Now i got to admit, God moves pretty strong in some of my church services, but the spirit today is where we are lacking in in God in in the body of Christ. All these spiritual gifts, now I want to briefly tell you what they are, briefly try to tell you how they they are to be used. But these gifts are for every Christian. There is no shortage of these gifts. God will give you every one of these gifts that you desire. Now some, most people don't have these and most people can't handle all of these. Boy, I'd like to see a person that could handle all of those and was fully functioning in those, in those gifts. But the spiritual gifts of God, and this, in the, in the Spirit, now what I want to say to you, the Spirit is very, very important because the Spirit is how we function uh, in the world around us, it's how much prestige that we have um, in the in the people around us. It it will determine how successful you are in life and in the things. Even even people that is not uh, Christian, the spirit of that person still determines how successful they will be in life. Okay. For instance, if you get a billionaire walks into the room, he carries quite a different spirit than uh, a bag lady that would walk in the room. There's quite a bit of difference in the spirit. The spirit of the, of the one that is used to commanding things um, is, is, uh, walks into the room, is very confident, uh, talks about things very uh, uh, confident, and he uh, talks to people that he's speaking with very confident. Now the, now the devil has a fake for that. The devil has a fake for all of these. And you have to be careful and, and watch out for what the devil is trying to portray. And, uh, and um, he, just, he just will fool a lot of people. I know this fellow at work that, now he used to be a boss. And uh, he got demoted, but not because of, of uh, well, for, uh, it was, they said they were cutting back. Well, and they cut him back. And they gave him a different job. They gave him his old job back, which was just driving a hoist truck. Well, he still talks to people like he has the same authority that he had before when he was a boss. And really, he's got no authority in that area at all. That's a, um, that's, that's a fake. And, and the devil will do that. You know, you got to look at the background of people, see where they're from, what they've done, who they are before you can uh, determine a person like I know when a preacher comes into, my, into our church and starts preaching, the first thing I want to know is 
who is he, where has he been, what's he done, and and uh, and uh, the spirit that he carries is very, very special. It's very important uh, for me to determine whether or not this man is worthy of listening to or following after. Amen. And so, okay, now I want to get into some of the spiritual gifts. And Apostle Paul here said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. You know that we are Gentiles carried away, that we were Gentiles carried away uh, unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And the reason he said that is because uh, the spirit that that you carry is very very important. No man uh, will come in to preach a sermon in front of a church cussing God's name all the way through. See how important that is. There's a lot of people that like uh, you know they like to portray themselves as being something big, and they use curse words to do that. Well, uh, truthfully, cursing is a form of. Uh, it's a, it's an inferiority complex. Yeah, I got to make myself look good, so I'll just I'll talk tougher. No, you don't have to make yourself look good. If you know you're good, you don't have to make yourself look good. If you know you have authority, you don't have to you don't have to fake it. And that's what Paul is talking about here. Okay. Um, now there are diversities of gifts. This is where he's getting into what the gifts are. And I'm going to try to explain a little bit as I go here, try to make this as quick as I can. And there are different administrations, but the same Lord. All these gifts, there is, Paul wants us to know here that all these gifts are from God. These are not, these, some of these don't come from the devil, some don't come from God, but these are all from God. A medium, if uh, uh, some of those people, they profess to be of God, those people are not of God. Stay away from those people. They'll lead you into hell. Don't pay any attention to them. Uh, there was one particular lady that was uh, following Apostle Paul around, and and uh, she was telling everybody how great he was. And the Bible said that in that particular time, in that place, that all those people went to this lady for their prosperity. Well, this lady kept following Paul around, saying, Oh, the Most High God, you are the man of you, and all this stuff like that. And, and Paul finally got tired of it, turned around and cast the demon out of this woman. This was a medium in the Bible. Paul cast the demon out of her. These things are not of God. And all of these spiritual gifts come from God. Listen, I'm a prophet. I'm not afraid to say I'm a prophet because I am of God. God, this is a, this is a gift from God. I want people to know who I am. And I'm not ashamed of it. And there's nothing wrong with you. If you're a pastor... You go around telling people you're a pastor. Well, if you're a prophet, tell people you're a prophet. My goodness. Don't be afraid to say who you are in God. If you know you are, say that. Amen. And now, read some more. Verse 6. And there are diversities of operations. Now, just because you got one gift don't mean you have to do the very same thing with it all the time. Okay? And learn these, learn these gifts as you go. If you're a Christian... And if you got saved yesterday, these gifts are for you. Go find out where, what they're all about, who they're for, what you're doing with them. Amen. And, uh, and uh, the rest of verse 6 says, But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Amen. The same God. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So you don't need to run after a medium. God gives you this thing to prosper you in it and to prosper the church in it. Amen. For to one is given by the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Um, and these two are almost, these are different, but now these are almost, a, the, I want to tell you how this works. I was deep in the Spirit playing a guitar on church one time. I didn't know where an A-flat was on my guitar. I had no idea how to get there. God showed me through the Spirit how to play an A-flat on a guitar. And uh, we were playing in a, in a C chord, of course. And uh, they went to that chord a couple times, and I just, I just missed it. And we got heavy into the Spirit, and I guess the Lord got tired of me missing that chord. <laughs> 
And all of a sudden, my fingers just went right to that A flat. And when I when I went to that chord, I remembered where it was the next time we got around to it. And then after uh, the the session was over, I went back and I checked to make sure that I w wasn't just faking. And if that chord really did sound as good as what I had heard before because I was playing with other people, so you want to go back and check things like that. And make sure that God did, you know, God can stand the test. Don't be afraid to test God in the things that he's given you. Okay? And uh, that's how that word of knowledge uh, works and the word of wisdom. And God can bless you tremendously. Another thing. To another faith by the same spirit. Faith, man, I'll tell you what, now faith, we can go deep in faith. I'm, try, I'm doing a sermon right now on faith. The, uh, every man uses faith. Every man uses faith, even sinners. The, the Bible says, to every man is given the portion of faith. And they use it every day. They determine what is the best thing for them to do for that day, what is good for them, what is bad for them, and they live by their faith. Whether it be a good faith or whether it be a bad faith, it's still the faith that they use. There is only one kind of faith, and this is the same faith that we find God with. This is the same faith that we prove Jesus. This is the same faith that we move mountains with. This is the same faith that we decide we're defeated or that, we're, that, we're, that we are uh, uh, victors for the day. The same faith. There's only one kind of faith. Don't let people think, make you think that just because somebody else can get, get a little more in God that they've got a different kind of faith. They don't have a different kind of faith. There's only one kind of faith. And that is, do you trust God enough? You could switch those two words back and forth. They still have the same meaning. Do you trust God enough? What are you putting your trust in today? Is your faith. And is also your God, by the way. Uh, faith. The gifts. And, and uh, to another it says the gifts of healing there in the, in the last part of verse 9. By the same Spirit. And Paul keeps saying by the same Spirit. By, because he wants you to know that all these come from God. There is no other entity that can get in here and give these. And uh, But Apostle Paul is saying that these are all from the Lord. These all worketh through the Spirit of the Lord, of the living God. Amen. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. Uh, prophecy. Now you can, you can um, have the gift of prophecy and not necessarily be a prophet. Now I don't want to go too deep in that because that's another long story. A prophet hears from God. God will speak to him in dreams, just like the Bible says over there in Numbers 12, 6, I think it is. Um, God will reveal things to him in dreams. Now the, the gift of prophecy, a man can stand in front of you and he can tell you where you've been where you're going and how God wants to bless you and man all kind of stuff you know that's the gift of prophecy um, and discerning of the spirits discerning of the spirits is sometimes I can walk in uh, I'm going to give you a positive uh, view of this some truckers come into my um, office area down where I work and uh I go out to unload their truck and I meet a lot of truckers. Some of those truckers come in, man, their face is hanging on the floor. And sometimes I get a little bit fooled. I, not everyone can I tell because people have a different uh, uh, spirit and sometimes you're just down and, and kind of hard to discern folks like. But some of them come in and I can just see God on that person. And they speak a couple words, man, I hear God in their voice. They walk and they well they walk to me like some preacher that I've known you know I'm and I'm I'm walking I'm like telling this guy I'm like you got to be a Christian he goes yes I am praise the Lord you know? <laughs> another great example of that is uh, uh I met this fellow where I worked when I first started to work there I met this fellow um, out on the dock area where I used to work there and. Uh, I heard a voice that sounded just exactly like my dad's voice. And I turned around and looked, 
And uh, I saw a man that was, he looked like my dad from the back. And I listened, I listened to him talk a little bit. Man, he sounded so much like family. And I went over and I talked to him. And, uh, we're from this little area down in the south in Virginia, uh, Grundy, Honaker area. And uh, we actually lived in Honaker when I moved to Indiana. And it's a great town. I love that place. I visit every time I go down, which is not very often, as much as I can. Okay, but <clears throat> I went over and I talked. I says, I said, who are you? And where are you from? And he says, my name is such and such. He was his last name was Miller. I forget what he said his first name. He says, um, he says I'm from Honaker, Virginia. I go, no, you're not. I said, what? He goes, yeah. He says, I'm from Honaker, Virginia. I go, man. I said, that's my hometown. And boy, we had a good conversation. He says, my wife works in the store there. He says, if you ever come down and visit, says come in the store and, and talk to my wife. And we went and looked. And we waited too long. We went and looked and waited so long. They tore the store down. So I, I don't know where the fellow is. Maybe the Lord will run us across each other's path again someday. But that's, that's a spirit. It's a good spirit. And God wants us to be discerners of spirits. There's bad spirits. Same way sometimes a man can come at you preaching good things and be the most evil thing ever walked. You know, we keep getting a lot of those on television. You know, I think too many people seek after too much television and not enough of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. And Paul goes on to finish this up. He says, But all these worketh one, that one and the same self, same Spirit, divideth unto every man several as he will. That's talking about God. Uh, verse 12, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Now that means that the people that don't have such and such a gift, that God will give that gift to other people so that we can be complete working of all the spiritual gifts that work together in the Lord and have a have a full understanding and have full benefits of all these gifts that God has given us. Now, now I want to show you something that's going to change your spirit so that help you understand. Now see, I'm not truly dressed up today. See, I'm going to stand up. You can see my, my shirt's not tucked in. I got blue jeans on, see, and um, you can tell. Now, see, your spirit has changed by me showing you. You thought I was all dressed up, but see, now your spirit has changed, and you look at me different now since I have uh, showed you what what I've showed you. But now, listen to this. That's how spiritual things work. You command in the spirit. You learn how to do these things. God will really uh, help you become a powerful person that. He wants you to be in Him, and uh, you know I don't I don't like to preach a lot of blessings, but no, that's what God wants us to do. We see uh, we we have to repent first. Blessing comes later. So uh, and and all things is done through the Spirit. Amen. So God bless you, and uh, I'll I'll see you again next time. We'll get this video on, uh, so that we can. Uh, uh, get some teaching done and get some powerful Christians across this country and hopefully to uh, help the body of Christ grow. Amen. God bless.